In, If Thou Must Love Me, Browning discusses the true meaning of love and the ways in which she wants to be loved with the form of a sonnet. Through the repetition of love, the poetic speaker expresses different views of love where she desires a deep, meaningful relationship which is not based on superficial, short-lived ideals, but rather based on unconditional love that lasts forever. She also comments on the uncertainty and complex nature of love as well as the gender dominances in a relationship through her use of language and form in a clear and confident tone. Traditionally, men would court women and dominant relationships in the Victorian patriarchal society in which Browning lived. However, she contradicts this attitude by setting her intentions clearly and confidently. The speaker wants her potential lover to love her for love's sake for such intense love would continue in their afterlife, from the line, eternity. Through the poem, the poet uses the poetic voice to ask her husband not to love her for beauty comfort or pity but for love itself. She presents love as an eternal quality that one should value for its own sake. This poem echoes her sentiments for her husband whom she asks to love her with all his mind, body, soul. The tone of the poem is rather ambiguous. In the beginning, she seems to be spurning any praise that might be directed towards her by her beloved, and we are left wondering why she would want to do so. Next, she tells him that she might change, and this sounds like an ominous warning. However, in the end, when she affirms the primacy of love as the reason their relationship will last a lifetime, the sincerity of her emotions shines through and dispels all our doubts about her intention in writing this sonnet. We are assured that she means to strengthen her relationship with her husband, and that is a satisfying feeling indeed. Imperative statement conditional, if, modal verb, must. Opposite ideas placed together. Rot, unrot, the first time the speaker explicitly says that she's scared that her partner might stop loving her is when she says, love, so rot, may be unrot so. It's the first time she allows herself to fully come to terms with her own fear. The choice of the word, rot, is also significant because it hints at the way she thinks relationships get formed. When something is, rot, it's made. Rot, is often associated with craftsmanship and metalwork, the blacksmith rot the sword. It associates love with something that's man-made which seems superficial. Rot, can also mean, more generally, made by using one's skills. Applying that to the process of falling in love, it seems cold and calculating to be very intentional to make some wall, fall, in love. There's a sense that love is being manufactured here, rather than happening naturally. Through this, Browning is questioning how love is made. The phrase, so rot, may be unrot so, is an example of a rhetorical device, chiasmus. Chiasmus is when you repeat a phrase in reverse word order and structure, so rot, rot so. It can be a very powerful way to mark a sharp divide or suggest a concept needs to be rethought. After all, it's life-shattering when your partner decides he doesn't love you anymore. Be changed, or change for thee. Form, structure assonance. Assonance, falls in well, fitting the line with the assonance, lightly flowing along, protesting tone the poem as a Petrarchan sonnet, the octave confidently explains her views on superficial love, and the sestet confirms what she wants of a relationship. The sonnet form is traditionally used for love poetry, and Browning stays true to this form, in her quest to attain her ideal love. Iambic pentameter is used throughout, this rhythm replicates a heartbeat which is important because she is expressing what her heart desires. This rhythm remains constant throughout the poem because her message remains the same throughout. She is clearly and confidently expressing what she wants from her new lover. The solid rhyme scheme reflects her sane, determined state of mind. Iambic pentameter the rhythm of the heartbeat and most closely resembles the rhythm of everyday speech. Shakespeare and Petrarch both created their own sonnets, Shakespearean, three X quatrains, one rhyming couplet, a bob, C D C D E F E F G G Petrarchan. 1x octave, 1x sestet, a b b a a b b a c d c d c d the sestet serves as confirmation or resolution of the ideas addressed in the octave. Attitudes. Superficial love in the patriarch world. Browning first discusses the superficial love in the male-dominated world she was living. The speaker lists that she doesn't want her lover to love her based on her, smile, 
her look, and her way of speaking gently. These are all about physical beauty, appearance, and manners. She opposes these physical attributes perhaps because she doesn't want her love to base on outward beauty and frivolous things as they are often temporary, unreliable, and superficial. The speaker takes the perspective of her lover where she speaks, for a trick of thought that falls in well with mine. Through this, we can see that she considers the fictional partner viewing love as a game with the noun trick. The verb, falls, is also significant, as she chose not to say it, goes well with mine, but rather, falls. The verb contains negative connotation and forwards the male dominance and power in the relationship that should have been equally powered. The following line, brought a sense of pleasant ease on such a day, reinforces the idea of male dominance and the female subservience in the poet's time. The speaker states that, thine own dear pity's wiping my cheeks dry, as an example of conditional love, which she emphasized that she wants her lover not to love her out of sympathy or pity. The image of tears represents a traditional unbalanced relationship where the male was the protector or comforter. Complex nature of love. As the poem progresses, Browning emphasizes the theme of the eternal but complex nature of love. The speaker states that she only accepts a type of love that is, for love's sake only, which she repetitively mentions throughout the poem. It is a very high ideal that describes an unconditional love that is a deeper love that endures all ups and downs and fluctuations in life. This idea directly contrasts with the examples the speaker listed earlier in the poem, with temporary, superficial things, as they would not be, for love's sake only. The poet hints at how to truly love someone with the last line, through love's eternity, implying that for love to be true love one must love her forever. It also reveals her hidden concerns about the concept of her ideal love. The speaker seems to be worried about the passage of time and the effect of which on love, with her final request being to love for eternity. Thus, she juxtaposes the temporary things such as smile and look, that could be subject to change with the idea of eternity. Therefore, Browning presents an idea that every possible reason for loving someone is shown to be subject to change because change is a plain fact of life. The only real love, the speaker hence argues, is a love that connects lovers to eternity. The poet also personifies love throughout the poem, with the possessive phrases, loves sake, and, loves eternity. However, with the use of personification, Browning provides temporary human qualities on the abstract idea of love, a contradiction is displayed in her message in the poem about love being unconditional and external, showing the complex nature of love itself. Gender issues and demand for gender equality. The poem itself also demands gender equality for women at the time. The title and the start of the sonnet, the phrase, If thou must love me, does not ask for love, but rather provides a condition, a choice. Being a woman, she puts forward her value and has a choice of choosing a lover, contrasting with the conventional way of getting into a relationship at the time, with women being subversive and meek. Moreover, the word, must, hints that the poem will be more complex than a straightforward answer a speaker would provide. It also establishes the determined tone of Browning with the use of imperative verb form. In the Victorian patriarchal society in which Browning lived, men would be the one to court women in dominant relationships. However, through this poem, she contradicts this attitude by setting her intentions clearly and directly. Furthermore, the poetic form of this poem is a sonnet, which is usually about love. But here, Browning warns about the vulnerability of love. 